funny thing. When Ford finally passed Tesla on last Thursday or Friday on market cap, everyone was making such a big deal about it. The Ford CFO even went on an interview with CNBC saying that the tide has turned or everything's going to be great for them. Well, guess what? It didn't even last a week and now Tesla passed Ford again. Funny thing though, no one was reporting it. Just a heads up, this video will be a bit long, so I've included the timestamps in the description for each question I will be answering. Starting with, first, why self-driving cars will be the future. Second, the difference between Tesla's approach and everyone else's. Third, why Waymo and other competitors know Tesla's going to win, but they can only trash talk Tesla, but not copy Tesla's approach. It's always funny to me when I hear those analysts or some online keyboard warriors pretending to be the experts asking, oh, but how does the self-driving car handle blah 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 situation? Listen guys, self-driving cars don't have to be perfect. They just have to be better than human drivers. And the fact is, us humans suck at driving. Shh, shh, just accept the fact that we, the human race, suck at driving. The self-driving cars don't have to be perfect. They just have to be better than you. Sorry to break it to you, but that's a very low bar to jump. All right, before we start, let's just get one thing clear. No matter how many accidents gets blown out of proportion by the media, a future with self-driving cars will have significantly less accidents than being on a road with everyone driving their own car. According to the research, for every 23 seconds, a road user will die. Comparing that to the Tesla autopilot crashes that gets blown way out of proportion by the media and competitions, which occurred, I think, three times in the past couple of years since the autopilot feature was used, I would prefer driving on road with all Teslas on autopilot than being beside an average human driver. It's an undeniable fact that the future will be a world where cars are capable of driving themselves. So who's most trusted to win in the race to achieve fully autonomous vehicles? Let's just ignore the so-called expert researches done by large organizations with lots of sponsors that could possibly skew the results, ahem, <clears throat> navigant, ahem, <clears throat> GM Ford clients. Let's just take a look at a couple of consumer surveys. So according to Autolist's survey, consumers trust Tesla the most, and the second mostly preferred option is, I don't trust anyone at all. Although we can't trust consumers completely, but their credibility has significantly increased in recent years since they are more aware of everything through the free flow of information. For instance, just on YouTube alone, everyone can share their test driving experiences with different cars, allowing viewers online to compare the products on the market. Oh, oh, and uh, another reason consumers trust Tesla the most is because Tesla is the only one with a competent self-driving feature already out on the market, and consumers were able to get the latest updates over the air, which no other company on the market has been able to do even to this day. So it's understandable why, like, from the eyes of the consumers, Tesla is vastly ahead of its competitions in terms of technology and will win the race. Lex is a credible research scientist at MIT working on autonomous vehicles and deep learning. According to a survey on his community that closely follows the topic of autonomous driving, Tesla has an incredible lead over the runner-up, and I guess GM and Ford, the other two that was supposed to be the ones leading the market in this technology according to Navigant Research, is only sharing that puny 14% with other companies. So what seems to be setting Tesla apart from the rest of the industry? Well, first of all, their approach is fundamentally different from the rest. On the hardware side, both approach use vision sensors, radar, and ultrasound. And the difference is that Tesla's using AI and deep learning to make their software and vision sensors function like the brain and the human eyes, whereas most of its competitors are relying on LiDAR and HD maps. Lex did an excellent presentation, and you can find the links of his presentation in the video description. So this comprehensive slide just lays out the pros and cons between the two approaches. A notable thing is, right now the LiDARs being deployed for testing units all cost about $75,000 per vehicle. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out why it's not feasible for the mass market. However, it is an easier path because you don't have to have as much data and technology like the AI or deep learning to train it. And then the legacy automakers can bet on its suppliers to work on reducing the cost until it's feasible to build their autonomous fleet. Although LiDAR is good for gathering extremely accurate depth information around you, it doesn't really work well in snow, fog, or wind. So instead of LiDAR, Tesla uses a combination of sensors like radar, ultrasound, and camera. In these graphs, 1 to 5 means how good it is, and a 5 in sensor cost means it's very cheap. Anyway, yeah, so from these graphs, you can see that no sensor is perfect in all directions on the spectrum, and that's where the sensor fusion comes into play. Tesla uses a combination of radar, ultrasound, and cameras around the vehicle, and the sensors are able to effectively cover for each other's weakness, making it a winning combination. 
With this chart, now do you see why it just doesn't make sense to use LiDAR? Of course, the competitors are also using other sensors, but you do see how LiDAR is not doing anything special, right? If radar, ultrasound, and cameras are doing its job, LiDAR is basically contributing nothing to the spectrum. For those of you that still argue how LiDAR is so necessary, do you drive with a LiDAR sensor above your vehicle, or do you drive with your eyes? I mean, LiDAR does provide another layer of sense of security, so I do see it as a viable option if the suppliers do manage to dramatically lower the price to a point where their consumer is comfortable paying for that. I'm definitely not going to be paying $75,000 more for a spinning retard above my head. Not to mention, those things look so big and ugly and apparently it requires frequent maintenance. To give you an idea of how powerful the sensor plus deep learning approach is versus the LiDAR approach, I'll make a comparison of the programs that are already out. According to the MIT dude who's been studying the subject, Waymo and the other companies LiDAR approach is supervised learning and hard coding, and it doesn't improve on its own over time. However, Tesla utilizes AI to conduct deep learning with the data they are able to collect with its massive fleet. It's like the comparison between AlphaGo and OpenAI versus the normal computer bots on easy, medium, or difficult settings for computer games. The difference is, those AI programs have now beat the best players in the world in their respective games, whereas those normal computer bots are no challenge but an average player versus environment mode that could be easily beaten by an average human being. Of course, now it seems like only stupid CEOs with only money but no knowledge would try to base their technology off of the old LiDAR approach because Waymo, the company that has been on this shit forever now, are doing it this way. However, just keep in mind that Waymo started working on this technology before the concept of AI and deep learning matured, and they're no expert in AI and deep learning. So it's going to be hard for them to completely abandon what they've been doing for years, which is hard coding and supervised learning, to jump to something they're no expert in, which is AI and deep learning. Frankly, they still believe that their $75,000 LiDAR sensor approach can also get the job done. It's human nature that if they believe both approaches can accomplish the same goal, they will rely on the familiar path. The Tesla bears will probably ask, if Elon's approach is so awesome, why aren't the competitors using this approach too? It seems to be significantly cheaper and better. Well, guess what? Not everyone's as forward-thinking as Elon. Since years ago, Tesla had already been putting 8 cameras in each of its vehicles and the hardware and software needed to collect data. The key to the Tesla approach success is data. You will need a shit ton of data to make it work and reliable. And Tesla has a massive fleet deployed already collecting data for them. Whereas for legacy automakers, they were too lazy to even install the backup cameras and blind spot cameras until a few years ago and they still don't have it up on all the models since they want to make it a premium future so you have to pay extra dollars for in New Year's models so they can make more money off of you. When Tesla's thinking about the future, other car companies are still focused on profit, flooding the market with different models every year that are barely different from each other and how to cheat the emission tests. So yeah, that's why the other players in the industry like Waymo, Uber, GM, Ford, Mercedes, they can't copy the Tesla approach even if they knew that's a better way. They don't have a massive fleet on the ground that can gather the data for them. So what can they do, you ask? Well, trash talk Tesla, that's what they've been doing. Then when T Tesla's technology is complete, they will most likely partner up with Tesla or pray that Tesla will remove the patent protection on its software like how it removed some of its battery patents. Unlike technology, they won't be able to poach Tesla employees this time because it's the data that Tesla have been collecting for years that's the competitive advantage, not the individual employees. Lastly, I like how Elon said LiDAR is a fool's errand and his competitors are all going to dump it in the future. Oh, mark my words part is just pure awesomeness. Now I think it's just a matter of time before everyone else realizes that the LiDAR approach on vehicles on Earth at least is doomed. But this mark my words comment from Musk might just push those companies to defend their ego and waste more time and resources to try and make it work. Or maybe they will just do what they did before with the EV revolution. First, they say EVs are never going to work, and then a few years down the road, you see the same companies rolling out their magnificent 20 or 40 EV models plan, backtracking on their words like it's just a noble thing to do. But still, so much noise, so little done. I don't see shit on the market yet. We're not even halfway into 2019. Audi already cut its 2019 production target from almost 60k e-trons to 10k now. Lastly, for any so-called LiDAR experts, I would just like to leave you with this. Don't measure what other people are capable of with how limited your capabilities are. Not everyone's like you.